ourselves in the midst of this most solemn week of the year. Palm Sunday is one of the most dramatic of all liturgies. When you think of the change in its emotion, you know, it begins with the crowds chanting Hosanna in the highest, and minutes later in the liturgy, the crowds are chanting crucify him, crucify him. Today, each day of Holy Week has its own traditions and its own uh, meaning, but today in our own diocese, as well as many dioceses throughout the world, it is the day of the Chrism Mass. Later today, this afternoon, the Cardinal will gather in the cathedral with many of the priests and deacons and representatives of our, very, our many parishes. And at one point in the liturgy, he will uh, present three canisters of oil. He'll bless them and then hold them up to be venerated by the congregation. One canister is filled with the oil of chrism, another the oil of the catechumens, and another um, with the oil of the infirm or the sick. This liturgy anticipates the tremendous joy of the sacramental graces of Easter, and these oils will be essential to the celebration of the sacraments throughout the year. The anointing with oil is a ritual that far precedes Christianity. In ancient Greece, in ancient Roman times, kings and prophets, soldiers and athletes, the sick, the infirm, those who are about to be buried, were all anointed with oil. And all of these oils in their essence are about healing healing and acknowledging the special strength we need to endure, to persevere, to be resilient. We need these virtues as we embark on our lives. The word that pops out of the gospel today is the word betrayal. And I don't think there would be anybody here today that hasn't experienced to some degree the reality of betrayal, the breaking of a confidence being put in a bad position, being treated poorly, putting our confidence in someone and having that confidence betrayed. There's many levels of betrayal that happen around us that the scriptures call us to. We think of the woundedness in the world, the hurts in the world that yearn to be healed. We think of our planet, Earth, I think of the words of uh, Pope Francis in his encyclical, Adato Si, our, our world is wounded, and wounded in many ways by wounds that are self-inflicted because of greed and indifference. We think of the woundedness that happens in our relationships with one another. These wounds, some of those wounds we carry in our hearts our whole lives, yearning to be healed of them. We think of the wounds that can happen in a community, in a neighborhood, in a nation, these wounds that yearn for healing. We hear that Jesus today confronts two of his closest friends who betrayed him, who wounded him. We always think first of all of Judas, but the gospel reminds us that another wound in the passion story was the betrayal of Peter who earlier in the gospel Jesus had entrusted the church to, upon this rock, I will build my church. Even his most trusted follower would betray him. And so as we move more deeply into the heart of Holy Week, as we ponder more profoundly the, the story of the passion and death of our Lord, we realize on a deeper level this gift of healing the Lord seeks to present to us, healing that was given to us through his own death and crucifixion, healing that took place by his many sacrifices and his profound love for you and for me, a love that has been embraced in every generation since that first Good Friday. We open our hearts to the power of our Holy Week journey we pray for healing, 
healing that comes to us through the sacraments because these oils in the coming weeks and months will be used to ordain deacons, priests, and bishops. These will be the oils that the newly baptized will be anointed with and candidates for confirmation. It will be this oil that will give comfort and consolation to the sick and the dying. It is this oil that will mark those who are beginning their journey to be received into the church. And just as each of these anointings will be a ritual of healing, we pray for healing in our world, healing so that the indifference to the sacredness of life can be confronted, a healing that brings devotion and respect to every person created in the image of God, a healing that helps us to carry the burdens of the crosses that each one of us must shoulder as we draw closer to Christ, the Prince of Healing. Thank you for joining us for the celebration of the Mass today. It's a blessing that you are with us. Every broadcast of this liturgy goes out to hundreds of people and hundreds of people all over the world. It's been an enormous blessing. If you'd like to support this virtual ministry of OLPH, please go to our website. You can support this ministry by going to Give Central so that we can continue to broadcast the liturgy each and every week. Thank you for your support. Most of all, thank you for joining us today. God bless you. Greetings from OLPH.